When I was young, I loved to run. I have many great memories of my dad taking me running regularly and competing in 10K races together. The two mile was my track event in high school. I particularly loved running down hills because I felt like I was flying. I dreamed of running in the Olympics someday. When I was seven years old, the movie Chariots of Fire was released. This film tells the story of runners from Great Britain competing in the 1924 Paris Olympics. Because of my passion for running, this movie quickly became one of my favorites as a child. Part of this movie is based on a true story of a sprinter named Eric Little, the Flying Scotsman, who was a devout Christian. Little's first Olympic final in 1924 was the 200 meter race in which he won the bronze medal. However, his 100 meter race would be held on a Sunday, which was his Sabbath day. Little chose not to run the 100 meter race even after receiving strong pressure from royalty and the Olympic Committee. Andrew Lindsay was one of Little's teammates who had already won a silver medal in the 400 meter hurdles. Lindsay offered his spot in the 400 meter race the following Tuesday to Little. This was a race Little was not prepared to run, but he accepted gratefully. Little's commitment to honor his religious convictions despite fierce pressure made worldwide headlines. On Sunday, of Little's original 100 meter race, he gave a sermon in a parish church and quoted Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Tuesday morning, the American coach said Little didn't have much of a chance at succeeding in the 400 meter race because it was much longer than the races in which Little had qualified for the Olympics. Eric Little ran the 400 meter race, beat the runners who had been favored to win, took home the Olympic gold, and set a new world record. In the blog, I include a link to the actual footage of Eric Little winning the 400 meter race. Imagine the impact the Chariots of Fire had on a young Christian runner. Keeping the Sabbath day holy became very important to me. At one point, Little's sister tells him that his running is a distraction from the work of God. And Little says, I believe that God made me for a purpose, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. As entrepreneurs, for what purpose did God make us? God gives gifts to all of his children. The American founding fathers had gifts in politics and leadership. The men and women who put the first astronauts on the moon had scientific gifts. What gifts has God given us as entrepreneurs that he wants us to use? When we use those gifts, how can we accomplish God's work? I've modified Little's quote to apply to entrepreneurs of faith. Let me know if this resonates with you. I believe God made me for a purpose. He made me an entrepreneur. And when I create and grow ventures, I feel his pleasure. When we find the gifts God has given us, and we use those gifts to do God's work and serve his children, we are doing what God made us to do. I accepted Russell Brunson's challenge to publish every day for a year during 2021. Knowing how much the Sabbath day means to me, why would I be publishing my blog and show on a Sunday? To me, the Sabbath day isn't just about what I should not do. It's even more about what I should do. Eric Little felt he should not participate in sporting events on Sunday. So he didn't do that. However, he also didn't stay home on the Sunday of the race. Instead, he went to a church, told a story, preached a sermon, and did God's work. Jesus Christ also did God's work on the Sabbath, such as teaching and healing. The Sabbath isn't about doing nothing. Instead, it's about resting from our labors so we have time to focus on God's work, which includes serving others. I don't feel comfortable publishing the same type of Monetization Nation episodes on Sunday that I'm going to be publishing the other six days of the week, so I'm not going to do that. However, instead of choosing to not publish anything on Sunday, I'm going to publish a different series of blogs and shows called Entrepreneurs of Faith. These episodes will share stories and scriptures of faith that can help entrepreneurs, marketers, CEOs, and other business leaders. On Sundays, my audience will transform from digital monetizers to entrepreneurs of faith. During these Sunday episodes, I won't run any paid external advertisements, and I will strive to create and schedule the episodes in advance. Here are my key takeaways from this episode. 
Number one, we should stay true to our convictions regardless of the pressure. Number two, we will all go through challenges, but as we learn in Isaiah 40, 31, when we wait upon the Lord, He has promised to renew our strength, help us metaphorically fly as eagles, and help us to run and not be weary, and walk and not faint. We can use our gifts as entrepreneurs to do what God made us to do. What gifts has God given you, and how does He want you to use them? I realize some entrepreneurs of faith observe the Sabbath on days other than Sunday. That's fine. I want entrepreneurs of faith to be inclusive and welcoming, regardless of differing doctrines like that. This is not a place to debate whether Saturday or Sunday is the correct Sabbath day. This is a place where all entrepreneurs can come and feel closer to God, hopefully. I realize these Entrepreneurs of Faith episodes will not resonate with every entrepreneur. If you're not interested in these messages of faith, you may choose to not read, watch, or listen to these Sunday episodes. However, if Entrepreneurs of Faith resonates with you, I encourage you to subscribe for free to the email list at monetizationnation.com so you can receive an Entrepreneurs of Faith episode in your inbox each Sunday. How has faith played a role in your entrepreneurial journey? Please join our private Monetization Nation Facebook group and share your insights with other digital monetizers.